Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Hey, today we're gonna to be looking at something that's considered to be a superfood, something that they're saying is helping to cure malnutrition in Africa, something that is just so chock full of vitamins, it's hard to believe that it comes out of a single plant. It is called the Moringa. Let's get busy. So I believe everybody should be able to plant f healthy fruits and vegetables in their yard or in their garden or on their patio um, or in pots or whatever it is. And uh, so one of the ways that I wanna do that is always for looking for some biodiversity up here. You know, we've got all of these different types of fruit trees up here. We've got um, stuff from different uh, species. We've got stone fruit and we've got some poem fruit over there. Like those are pear over there. We've got these gorgeous blackberries, oh, which are ripe. Oh my goodness, look at these. Look at all these gorgeous berries down here, you guys. It's gotten hot enough to ripen them, but not, thankfully, not hot enough to scorch them. There's always this delicate balance. Mmm, delicious. Yeah, look at all of this stuff. You know what I need to do? I need to ask Michelle to come down here and pick a bunch of these, make it into a beautiful pie. We have enough. That's always the other problem too, is we pick them so regularly, like I'm doing right now, it's so hard to stop. Sometimes they have little things hanging on. Mmm. Oh, that was a good grand finale. The point is I'm always looking for different types of things to plant up here uh, for a few reasons. One is because I love having variety. Tasting different things is a lot of fun and trying and kind of saying, hey, which one do I like better? And kind of in inspecting how long it takes for something to ripen or be ready. Um, another reason why I like having lots of things up here is because it creates uh, that successive ripening. So for example, like these Granny Smith apples are gonna be ready in several months. Whereas this, you know, uh, Dorset Golden Apple, we, we already ate all of them. And then we've got our cherries over there, which were ready in May. And that's different than, you know, this persimmon that's gonna be ready also in the fall. <coughs> so having some successive ripening is a lot of, a lot of fun. It gives our family some variety throughout the year. Um, but really one other thing that I've seen be a real lifesaver for me up here is by having a diverse set of um, fruit trees up here, different types, is that when something comes through, like the peach leaf curl, for example, that really hit this tree really hard, or you know, this one had this weird fungus where um, on the fruit itself, it's kind of this gray, you can see some of the remnants of it. See those? See that, gr that brown thing right there? Comes through and just, rots the fruit right on the tree, really crazy stuff. Well, when you, have, when you have biodiversity, when you've got a bunch of different types of trees and plants, any one issue coming through, any one pest, any one type of thing coming through, doesn't wipe out your entire crop. Could you imagine if I was, if I was only farming, you know, nectarines, for example? I'd be in real trouble if some fungus came through and wiped it. So having some diversity around here with respect to biodiversity um, creates a lot healthier environment and it also attracts different types of pollinators, keeps the pollinators coming by. Lots of reasons to do it. It's really good stuff. And we're so fortunate to be able to grow all of this stuff also. <laughs> That's the other part of it. Look at this jujube, by the way. Look how tall this thing has gotten since the last video. I did an update video on this just recently talking about how well that long jujube was doing and this Lee has just gone crazy. Look at it, I'm gonna come through and probably cut around here to give this long some more vertical space to grow. Anyway, when I heard and saw the Moringa tree, I became intrigued. So the Moringa tree is a really interesting tree. They sometimes will call it a drumstick tree because of the long pod things, fruit that grow off of it. And um, the Moringa tree is really a fascinating thing because most of the parts of the tree are edible. And this has gone a long way to, um, to helping with, 
with malnutrition in places like Africa, which often have poor soil. Um, not all of Africa, but areas of Africa, of course. And that's made a real big difference because this stuff is so chock full of vitamins. It's chock full of protein. Um, those drumsticks and every part of it, the drumsticks that go, they have these little seeds in there and a lot of times they'll cut those and uh, well, they'll fry those little seeds and make those so they're little crunchy things. Um, they can take the, the roots out of here um, if they're gonna harvest a Moringa tree and can grind it up and it almost has like a horseradishy flavor to it. But probably the most common Western use of the Moringa tree is in the leaves. Now, I let this thing get beat up in a five gallon pot through the heat and so it's not, you know, it's kind of looking a little haggard from when I first got it at Home Depot. But the leaves are, especially when they're fresh, are incredibly nutritious, both in terms of vitamins, protein, um, and have a lot of these beneficial vitamins that a lot of times people will take these leaves, they'll dry them up, they will then blend them, and they'll create a powder that they'll put into capsules or they'll throw in a smoothie. And so it's an interesting thing with this Moringa tree. Um, I'm gonna eat this right now and tell you what it tastes like. It tastes, honestly, it tastes a little bit grassy and even a little bit, um, little grassy and a little bit spicy. Yeah, it is like a little horseradishy. Maybe that's a good way to describe it. One um, kind of neat thing about this Moringa tree is that, and one of the reasons why they're really doing so well in places like Africa is that they re don't require good soil. They can grow in fairly poor soil. They can grow um, without a ton of upkeep. The way you do it and the way that you harvest it is as it grows out the leafy branches and as it comes up, you cut it way down and that causes a big flush of leafy growth. And you just come through and you harvest those that leafy growth. So you always want this in a state of kind of leafiness. Um, and this thing left to its own devices can grow what, 30 feet? 30 to 35 feet. Well, if you follow this channel, you know it's not gonna do that. <laughs> because <laughs> we keep sh things short enough to where we can, we can um, you know, easily harvest them. But one other reason for that is because we want, we want to be encouraging, we don't want a bunch of uh, woody growth, we want a bunch of leafy growth because that's what we're gonna be using. So that's something to consider um, as you're looking at maybe supplementing and having something in your yard that is gonna be really healthy, but also, you know, if there's some sort of shortages, God forbid, you know, there's something that can provide some sort of, uh, you know, decent sustenance while you're not waiting for your flavor grenade pluots to ripen up. Look at this thing. Look at this. Are these ready? Just loaded again this year. This is one of the things I would recommend if you have like a Santa Rosa plum that can pollinate it. These flavor grenade pluots are awesome. One of the things I love about them is how whatever this has been so productive but aside from that um, how long they hang on the tree and how long over how many weeks you're able to eat them and the flavor changes. Mmm, mmm, it's crunchy, but sweet and very tasty. Mmm, and it made a great pollinator for our emerald drop pluot. I'll talk about that another time. All right, back to the Moringa. We gotta plant this thing today. Get it in the ground where it'll be happy. It wants full sun, so I'm gonna put it in a spot of our yard that's gonna um, have lots and lots of sun. As it leaves out and greens out, it's gonna help to cover some of this fence, which is also an added bonus. And um, I'm gonna plant it all over here and I feel really enthusiastic about how it's gonna do in this spot. So I'm just gonna find a spot in the middle there, dig a hole, plant this puppy, and get going. So refreshing. Look how meaty this is. These are giant this year. Well, a couple of things that I found really helpful when I'm planting a fruit tree is using a bucket like this in order to put some of the mulch and some of the other uh, dirt that I'm gonna be using. That way I can easily refill the hole and backfill the hole once I'm done with it. And the other is this. It, guys, if you don't have a good shovel, you need to get a good shovel. I've always used the ones with like the fiberglass handles that break, the wood handles that break, they get bleached out by the sun. I've been so impressed with this Fiskars. They call it the world's best shovel. I'm tempted to agree with them. I love that it has a strike plate. Anyway, I'll put a link to this if you're interested in it. Um, okay, first thing needs to happen is I need to clear this area out of all of this muck. I also need to grab another bucket so that I can fill it with some of the mulch. It 
It's absolutely fascinating how different the soil is in different parts of the yard. 20 feet that way, it's silty, tons of rocks. Over here, it's a lot heavier soil. Um, it feels like higher quality, like it'll actually absorb, retain moisture. Not as many rocks, just little pebbles. Okay, so the way that my approach on planting a fruit tree or a tree of any kind, uh, especially up here in this soil that sometimes doesn't drain, is I want to plant it up on a, I want to plant it above grade. So if you can see here, here's where the, about here's where the soil is in the pot. I'm actually going to plant it in the ground so that this much of it is sticking out. And then I'm going to mound earth up around it. And so that way, this will give the roots that are near the top an opportunity to um, breathe and to spread out. And that way it doesn't get in there. Plus when trees are planted, they often will settle a little bit too. And I never want this thing to be beneath the, the grade. So yeah, we're gonna be going, instead of here where the soil is, we're gonna be um, having the surrounding soil and then have this planted above the grade by about this much. Um, another thing to consider too, is that you want the you want there's to be some space around the soil, but I've started to not amend the soil around it. I used to do that. I used to put like some little goodies in there for the tree to kind of get and go. But what I'm realizing is I don't want the tree to be happy where it's at. I want it to go out in search of nutrients. And so I can put some fertilizer over the top and let that kind of go down into the soil, but I'm not mixing in any type of amendment. I'm just letting it, I want to get established in this soil so that way it can grow and be happy up here. All right, let's get this in the ground. As I'm looking, I noticed that the hole that I dug, <laughs> I actually, I'm so used to digging for 30 minutes that uh, I was able to dig out a lot of earth here. And the hole that I dug, if I put the pl plant in there, it's actually below grade, so I'm gonna backfill. I can't believe I'm saying that. All right, there we go. This is about the soil level right here. And so I've got about three, four inches above it. With this, I'm gonna gently pat the sides to try to break the soil off of the side of the pot. And then I'm gonna guide it out. I'm not gonna pull it out, I'm gonna guide it out using gravity as my friend and just gently, I'm not yanking it out, I guess. I guess I am pulling very lightly. Um, now I do not want this root ball to break up on me and it didn't. Um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break up the roots a little bit here because I do not want this thing to get root bound. I want all the roots to be not in the shape of a pot. I want it to kind of be looking in the ground around it. All right, that's I think the perfectly planted height. Okay, now as you backfill, um, you wanna pay a little bit of attention to how straight this is. Um, like in this case, straight is right here. So I'm gonna be backfilling around that, but you always have an opportunity to straighten it after you've backfilled it a bit. I don't know how visible this is or if you can see it, but this is, this is decent soil. It, it, compaction test, you see those ridges where it's holding together, but it's not super heavy. Not bad, not bad soil. Once you find where you want your tree to be, it's totally fine to just give and compact this a little bit. Compact the soil around it. You want it to make, you want those roots essentially to be very well, very well connected to the soil around them. So that looks pretty good. It's funny being on a slope trying to figure out what is straight, but I'm using this fence line to kind of eyeball it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Not bad. Okay, so now we dump the mulch. We dump the mulch back on here. Mulch, 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 guys. If you're not mulching, you're missing out. So like a wood chip mulch um, for fruit trees, especially like a nice, you know, mixed size. Um, you keep that around. You don't have it up against the trunk because that can cause like crown rot um, and can lead to root rot and stuff like that. But just putting it on the on the soil around it and a couple of inches away from the trunk. Okay, this thing is planted. Look at that. Look at how good that looks. I mean, she might be a little bit ugly right now, but trust me, this is a well-planted tree. 
Okay, all that's left to do is to water this thing. And once I water it, it's gonna have um, everything that it needs. In there, I'm gonna run a drip line to it and make sure that it's part of getting now our regular watering. Um, once it's in the ground, I may come through and give it a couple of supplemental waterings, especially the first few weeks, just to make sure that the soil is really connected with uh, the roots. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna be great. I've, this has been put off for way too long. So I'm so excited to have my Moringa tree. Um, have you used Moringa before? I'd love to hear your thoughts on what has worked for you. Have you used it in any recipes? Do you use it in a salad? Do you dry it and, and crush it up? Do you eat the roots? What do you do with those seed pods? I know that people say that they um, are like, a, again, a fried little snack, but um, I'd be curious to see what people, uh, you know, in the real world are using these things for. What, do you, what about you? I consider you the real world. <laughs> anyway, this is the Moringa tree. This is planting a Moringa how to do it, some information about it. Hey, if you um, think this uh, this video or this channel has been helpful to you, subscribe. I'd love to have you part of, part of our community here, um, following along with our journey as you do your journey. And um, hopefully this gives you some confidence to be able to do some of these things in your yard. What about hit that little notification bell? That way you know when there are videos. Otherwise you're just guessing. Um, and, and if you hit that like button, that makes me feel oh so good. Anyway, hey. Appreciate you tuning in today to this planting of this Moringa tree. Love when we connect. Keep at it. Until next time, stay busy.